Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, my law firm website. Keeping it free. .blogspot.com, a financial blog I run that's gotten more than a million views. Today is Wednesday, June the 17th, 2020. Let's talk about the Kennedy assassination, why I personally believe, despite what you've heard, Lee Harvey Oswald would not have been convicted of John Fitzgerald Kennedy's murder. Let's talk about why, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this is part of a series of videos that I'm doing on this assassination because the subject matter is so deep. There's so many twists and turns what we've been told, the American public for years, is so questionable that the subject matter demands a series of videos, not just one video. So today's video is going to focus on just a little bit more than 15 minutes of time. From 12.15 p.m. on November 22, 1963 to a little after 12.30 p.m. when the President of the United States has been assassinated, has been shot, right? According to official record, he dies around 1 o'clock. <laughs> I would question that. Well, let's try to figure out where exactly the primary suspect, because folks, he's never been convicted. The primary suspect, Lee Harvey Oswald was during that period of time and how it lines up with the witnesses. People think the prosecution would have been able to present at trial had Oswald lived to the trial. Now there is a witness who completely blows apart, completely blows apart the official narrative of where Lee Harvey Oswald was. Right? We know that the gunman, at least according to the official version, the Warren Commission version, fires a Manlicher Carcano rifle out of the sixth-story window of the Texas School Book Depository, right, at 1230. That's what we've been told. And, according to the Warren Commission version, the shooter was Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, Carolyn Arnold a 20-year-old secretary at the Texas School Book Depository who was pregnant at the time. At 12.15 p.m., 15 minutes before the shooting, sees Lee Harvey Oswald. She's certain it's Lee Harvey Oswald. She sees Lee Harvey Oswald on the second floor. He's over by the Coke machine. He's buying a Coke. She sees him there. Oswald, in his statement to law enforcement, while he was in custody, maintained that he was having lunch on the first floor and that he then went up to the second floor bought a Coke, came back down to the first floor, right, continued eating in the domino room of the Texas School Book Depository, where a lot of people ate lunch. And according to Oswald, he then goes outside 
to watch the presidential motorcade. That's Oswald's version of events. Understand, that version wasn't disclosed to the American people for years. FBI agent James Hostie's notes, and by the way, that's the same agent who Oswald was keeping in touch with before the assassination. James Hostie's notes in which he discusses Oswald's alibi weren't uncovered until the last two years. Right? Think about how ridiculous that is. So understand, not only does Carolyn Arnold see Oswald around 12.15 p.m. on the second floor, in the second floor lunchroom, where Oswald says he bought a Coke. But Oswald's own version of events has him on the second floor lunchroom buying a Coke right around that time. Understand too, Carolyn Arnold's co-worker, Virgie Rackley, talks about how Carolyn Arnold left her office at 12.15 p.m. So you not only have Carolyn Arnold putting herself in the second floor lunchroom, you have a co-worker corroborating the time. So here's where it gets interesting. Understand there are people outside of the building who are there to look at the President of the United States. These are some of the major witnesses to history. Howard Brennan, Carolyn Walther, Ronald Fisher, and the person he was with, Robert Edwards. Now let's get the timeline right. If Oswald is on the second floor buying a soda at 12.15 p.m., there is no way that he could be at the same time on the sixth floor to be seen by any of these witnesses. just not possible. Let's go one step further. Understand some of these witnesses weren't looking at their watches at the time they looked up and they saw the assassin looking out of the sixth floor window from which we believe President Kennedy was shot Right? Some of them say that they may have noticed the guy five minutes or so, 1225-ish or so. Right? Before the shooting. Understand, these witnesses, while they give differing accounts, of what the assassin looked like. Right? One witness has the assassin with a ball spot. Lee Harvey Oswald had a full head of hair. Right? Howard Brennan has the assassin wearing light colored clothing. Lee Harvey Oswald is wearing a brownish shirt that day. Right, so while these witnesses 
can't really with certainty ID Lee Harvey Oswald in the window. In fact, Lee Harvey Oswald was part of a lineup that Howard Brennan saw. And Brennan could not ID him as the person he saw in the window of the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Right? But just understand, the timeline that would put Oswald up there is blown by the fact that you have a school book depository employee who sees him on the second floor buying a soda at 12.15. Understand too, there were other people in the building. No one saw Oswald run up the steps to get to the sixth floor. Well, it gets deeper. Apparently there were two black guys. And that's important because race mattered in Texas in 1963. Understand the declaration of Carolyn Arnold identifies her as a white woman. Right, so there are two black guys. James Jarman and Harold Norman. They're outside in the doorway of the building trying to see the presidential motorcade. As you could imagine, it's crowded, it's frantic. Their view wasn't the best. So, according to Jarman, right, sometime between 12.20 p.m. and 12.25 p.m., they walk inside. They walk through the domino room. And they go someplace to try to get a better view. Right, presumably upstairs or someplace with the window. Well, we know from where the car was that the presidential motorcade is at Main Street at 1222. 1222. So based on the statements of James Jarman and Harold Norman, we know that at the earliest, these guys would have walked through the domino room at 12.23. The domino room is on the first floor of the Texas School Book Depository Building. First floor. When Lee Harvey Oswald is questioned by law enforcement, Oswald tells them that he was having his lunch in the domino room and that he saw Junior, James Jarman's nickname, and a shorter black guy, shorter Negro, walk through the domino room. Right, folks. These two guys aren't in the domino room until 1223. How would Oswald know that? Understand, if Oswald was in the domino room on the first floor, seven minutes before the president gets shot, he could not have been on the sixth floor pulling the trigger. Simply couldn't have been. Well, let's go one step further. According to Oswald, 
He then goes outside after he finishes his lunch to see the motorcade. Right now, folks, what I'm about to say next is simply a stunner. It's only in the last 10 years or so that we have finally gotten film of the entire doorway of the Texas School Book Depository. Understand, in the years preceding the last 10 years, we were led to believe that the only film of the doorway of the Texas School Book Depository was about half of it, showed only half of it, that the other half was blocked by the building. Well, we now know that there were many cameramen from the press taking film from all kinds of angles. So we now have the entire doorway. The entire doorway. Now, the people who work at the Texas School Book Depository did not notice anyone strange. That's what they told law enforcement. They didn't notice any strange people in the building or in the doorway. Would it surprise you to learn that there is a figure at the side of the doorway? Of course, this figure is in the portion of the doorway that we didn't get information on for decades. There's a figure in the doorway who's approximately the height and weight of Lee Harvey Oswald. It's a black and white film, right? The height and weight of Lee Harvey Oswald wearing, by the way, the same color shirt that Lee Harvey Oswald wore on November the 22nd, 1963. Because this video came from the press, because we know the cameraman, because it was a press outfit that took this video, we know the video is authentic. In sum, we might actually have video of Lee Harvey Oswald at the time of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. The figure standing in the doorway has been dubbed by the investigative community. Prayer Man. And what I want you to do is to Google Prayer Man. There's even a Prayer Man site that highlights FBI agent James Hosty's notes in which he refers to the fact that Lee Harvey Oswald told him during his interview with Oswald that after he ate his lunch, he then went outside to see the motorcade. Right, folks, if Prayer Man is Lee Harvey Oswald, then somebody else killed our president. Let me just point out to the people in the hall, excuse me, in that doorway, the co-workers don't recall seeing Lee Harvey Oswald, who, by his own admission, wouldn't have come out until right before the presidential motorcade. Understand, at 12.23 at the earliest, he sees James Jarman and Harold Norman walk through the domino room. Right? It could have been later. It could have been 12.25. He finishes up his lunch. He then walks out. Everyone's already there. He's over at the side. It's so frantic out there that Jarman and Norman had left because they couldn't get the view they wanted. So they went to get a better view. Well, just understand 
while it is true that the people in the doorway don't recall seeing Lee Harvey Oswald. Understand the people in the doorway also don't recall seeing the figure who's been caught on film. They didn't know the person was standing there. We know someone was. The question is, was it Lee Harvey Oswald? Understand too, nobody in the doorway saw anyone strange there. Researchers have gone through all of the people who worked at the Texas School Book Depository. They have been unable to exclude Lee Harvey Oswald as the person standing in the doorway of the Texas School Book Depository at the time of John F. Kennedy's murder. So let me just say, Given the legal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt, wouldn't the fact that at 1223 at the earliest, Lee Harvey Oswald saw co-workers James Jarman and Harold Norman walk through the domino room, wouldn't that fact by itself create reasonable doubt? How about the fact that Oswald tells law enforcement when he's arrested that he went up to the second floor of the school book depository to buy a Coke and there's actually a witness who sees him there at 12.15 p.m. Wouldn't that create problems for the prosecution? Understand, too, how dicey things are with witness Carolyn Arnold. They took a statement from her shortly after the assassination. She claims that the statement contained errors, that she wasn't given an opportunity to review the statement. The statement makes it sound like she saw Lee Harvey Oswald not on the second floor, but on the first floor. And that she was unsure if it's him. Understand, Arnold has given interviews to researchers where she points out that she was absolutely certain that it was Lee Harvey Oswald that she saw. In those interviews, she has pointed out, look, the commission statement has me perhaps seeing him by the doorway on the first floor when I saw him on the second floor. If a jury reached the conclusion, and there are a few witnesses, like Carolyn Arnold who claim that the investigators misquoted them. If a jury reached the conclusion, as they did in the O.J. Simpson case, that law enforcement could not be trusted, that they couldn't take law enforcement's writings at face value, then the jury could well have believed Carolyn Arnold herself versus the questionable statement in fact, it's two statements that law enforcement took from her. Let me also point out, too, that logistically, people outside the building couldn't have seen Lee Harvey Oswald on the sixth floor at 1225 when he's supposed to have been buying a Coke on the second floor at 1215 and when he's supposed to have seen Two black co-workers walk through the domino room at the earliest 
at 1223. Aren't you also perturbed? That Oswald flatly tells the police, this is before knowing what's filmed and what's not filmed, that he went outside to watch the motorcade. And of course there is film of someone who's roughly his height and weight doing just that in the doorway of the building. So, there is some folklore about a policeman, Marion Baker, running into the building with Oswald's boss, Mr. Truly, and them running into Oswald on the second floor, perhaps at the same Coke machine, buying another Coke right after the president got assassinated. You may have seen this scene in Oliver Stone's JFK, right, where they run into the room Oswald is there. He's not out of breath. Again, he's not out of breath. And his boss says the president's been killed. And the two guys continue running. The boss identifies Oswald as a worker of his. And so the cop, Marion Baker, and Truly run off. Right there, running upstairs to see who they could find. Right? To investigate the death of the president. Let me make a few points. First, Marion Baker's initial statement of what happened when he ran into the Texas School Book Depository doesn't even mention running into Lee Harvey Oswald. There's no mention of it. Understand, too, the way the second floor lunchroom was built. These guys running up the stairs wouldn't have run into Oswald. You should view the Marion Baker story with suspicion. It's inconsistent with Baker's initial statement. If Oswald bought a soda at 12.15, why would he buy a soda a minute after the president's been killed? More importantly, in the Prayer Man video, and I do hope everyone watching this video Googles Prayer Man, it's an eye-opener. Right? Again, this news is recent. Last decade or so. If you studied the Kennedy assassination in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the O's, you missed the story. Believe it or not, on the Prayer Man video, you actually see Truly and Baker run into the building right by the person we call prayer man right the film is a bit incongruous with the idea that they would run past Oswald into the building and then somehow Oswald would beat them to the second floor and be seen buying coke but let me just say There is the possibility that Oswald might have been someone who drinks a lot of coke. Maybe Oswald, after the assassination, goes back into the building, which I find hard to believe, but maybe he goes back into the building. And maybe he goes to the second floor to buy a coke for the road. Let me just say this too. There is folklore out there that Oswald is the only person who leaves the Texas School Book Depository after the murder. He's not. <laughs> several co-workers, several, leave the building. They were told, given what's happened, we're not working this afternoon. In fact, there are a version of facts that has Oswald running into a supervisor and talking with the supervisor before he goes home. So all I ask 
is that if you feel that I have misrepresented any portion of the facts presented in this video, that you comment on them in the comment section of this video. Let me also say too, for those of you unfamiliar with Prayer Man or for those of you with familiarity with Prayer Man, let me ask that you leave your thoughts on Prayer Man in the comment section of this video. Understand Oswald is 5'9". He weighs a little less than 135 pounds. Very slender guy. Now there are some researchers out there who've poured over the Prayer Man film who are somehow convinced that Prayer Man is actually a woman. Right? There are those out there who believe that. If you're one of them and you want to make the case here in the video, let's use YouTube's interactivity features. Feel free to do so. But understand my goal here is to get people to look at this crime again. Right? Let's ask the question of why Oswald was killed while he was in police custody. Right? Had this gone to trial, even if you think Oswald did the crime, do you feel that the prosecution would be able to prove that Oswald did the crime beyond a reasonable doubt? I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.